In one of my previous videos, I have already discussed the spectrum of the psyche. There, we have seen that images and archetypal thoughts appear on the ultraviolet end of our scale, while emotions and impulses to action appear at the infrared end of the scale of psychic processes, where they merge with physiological, that is material processes. The influenciability of the psyche and the body is mutual. The psychic state can be altered with chemicals, but the chemical processes of the body can also be influenced by psychic alterations. At the ultraviolet port of the schema, there occur certain material phenomena. Here we encounter so-called ghost or spirit phenomena, as they are called in parapsychology. Among these ghost phenomena, in which to a certain extent something psychic simultaneously expresses itself materially, there is a special category of parapsychological phenomena that Jung calls synchronistic phenomena. Now the question arises, is every encounter we have with the outer world a seemingly senseless accident? Or is it worthwhile to make distinctions between meaningful and meaningless coincidences? For example, what if at an airport, when I blew my nose, an airplane crashed? Something like this is only a meaningless coincidence, an accident that does not call for us to look for anything behind it. However, if the night before, I have a dramatic dream about a plane crash, and then, while I am waiting for the arrival of a friend at the airport, the crash happens just as I dreamt it. Then, I have no alternative but to say to myself, this cannot be meaningless coincidence. What distinguishes synchronistic events from synchronous elements is not an absolute but a relative simultaneity. For example, if I dream one night about a plane crash and then see it take place the next day just as I dreamt it, a few hours goes by between the two events. In general, there is a small time interval between the two events, thus we have only relative simultaneity. What is essential, however, is equivalence of meaning. The connection between the two elements is based on their equivalent meanings and not on some causal relationship. If we formulate this scientifically in a more precise manner, it is not an inner and outer state that coincide since any outer state or external event cannot be perceived per se. We can perceive it only through the filter of our psychic reality. Therefore, in formulating the situation scientifically, we have to say, synchronicity is constituted by the coincidence or simultaneity of two psychic states, that is, a normal psychic state that can be adequately explained causally and another not derivable from it that is the critical experience which is not causally connected with the first and the objectivity of which can only be verified later. Von Franz gives a practical example from her own life to understand this concept. She writes, I had a female adolescent who was extremely suicidal. When I went off on my summer vacation, I was concerned over how she would get through this period without analysis. I did however take my vacation. I had made her solemnly promise that she would write to me if she had any kind of trouble. One morning, I was chopping wood and had these thoughts. This wood is still wet. I will pile it up at the rear so that it won't be used first and will still have a chance to dry out. This was a rather long thought process that could be completely causally connected with my activity. Then suddenly, I saw this patient before me and thought about her. This completely disrupted the flow of my thoughts. I felt directly how this other thing broke in on my thoughts. I thought, what could that woman suddenly want from me? Why am I thinking about her? Then I asked myself if I could have somehow gotten to the thought of her from my preoccupation with the wood. There was no associational path from the wood to her. I went back to the wood shopping and again her image was there this time with a feeling of urgent danger. At that point, I put aside my axe, closed my eyes and thought, should I take my car and drive to her immediately? Then I got the quite definite feeling, no, it would be too late. 
then I sent a telegram. Don't do anything foolish with my signature. Later, it came out that the telegram reached her two hours later. At that moment, she had just gone into the kitchen and turned on the gas valve. At that point, the doorbell rang, the postman delivered the telegram, and she was naturally so struck by this coincidence that she turned the gas valve back off and is now still among us. This illustrates the two states, one normal, adequately explainable by causal means, her thoughts about the wood, and a critical experience not derivable from the first state, the objectivity of which can only be verified later, and which manifested by forcing an image through. Only two days later she was able to find out what had actually happened. For this reason, Jung did not consider this phenomena to be synchronous, that is, precisely coinciding in time, but rather synchronistic, since a certain time lapse is present. In such moments, the customary space-time continuum or the causal network of events seems to be suspended. So we can say that bound up with the archetypes that underlie synchronistic events is the presence of something like a knowledge in the form of symbolic images. This is a kind of luminosity or partial consciousness on the part of the archetypes, a knowledge that is conscious only in the archetypal realm but not conscious for the ego. It is something that makes a sudden appearance in ego consciousness. We might therefore say that something archetypal in me knew about this suicide attempt, and this suddenly broke in on my conscious thought process. Jung describes synchronicity as follows. First, an unconscious image crops up, directly or indirectly, as a dream image or a waking idea. Second, an objective state of similar meaning coincides temporarily with this content. Jung showed in his work on synchronicity that the Chinese notion of the Tao actually reflects synchronistic thinking. The Orientals do not understand connections between events causally, but rather as synchronicities. Thus, we could say that man can pose two legitimate questions to nature. He can ask, why does this happen when I do that? This question leads to the establishment of the causality principle, which now has been relativized to the level of probability. Or he can ask, what in nature tends to coincide in the same moment? That is also a legitimate question, the one that the oriental people have asked. This idea was implicit in the idea of Tao. The Tao is more or less the cosmic meaning at each moment. Thus, we should say, the total meaningful moment of time that lies behind all appearances is the Tao.